You guys ever wonder what it would be like if the original gym leaders of Johto got replaced? I'm talking a universe where the gym leaders of Johto aren't who we're used to and instead are some of the strongest trainer classes to ever roam the region, each specifying in a unique type and ultimately creating a brand new gym challenge. Well today, we're doing just that and reimagining the Johto region if the gym leaders got replaced by top notch trainers. We're also tackling the Elite Four and of course a very surprising champion. So sit back, relax, get cozy, hit that like button, and let's get started with our first gym leader. And that's Miss Evelyn, everyone's favorite teacher. Miss Evelyn uses her classroom experience to craft battle strategies that are versatile and adaptive, much like her diverse capabilities of her normal type Pokemon. Her team consists of the early route rodents known as Sentret and her ace Furret, making for a fantastic first gym challenge for any new challenger. After inspiring the next generation of Johto Masters, you, the player, get your first badge and head off to the second gym leader who's none other than the detective Grady and he specializes in the dark type. Detective Grady here used to be known as Officer Grady but after a recent promotion he also decided to use his skills to help new trainers deduce battle strategies with gym battles. He does this with his team of Murkrow and Houndour which is a really neat addition to the region that introduced this type for the first time. Once you defeat the detective then you get to go up against the third gym leader and that's Pokefan Clay a huge Pokemon enthusiast and a collector of ground type Pokemon. And he's an avid collector and he also aims to collect over a hundred ground type Pokemon species. But when he's not pursuing his dream of collecting them all, he's taken on challengers as the sturdy third gym leader. He does this with his team of Rhyhorn, Santru, and his ace Donphan. Next up is the fourth gym leader and that's the medium known as Esmeralda, the ghost type specialist, who can commune with the spirits and they often give her insights she needs to counter her opponent's moves, because that seems to be the only explanation on how she always seems to be one step ahead of the competition. She does this with her team of Haunter, Gengar, and her ace, Mystery Bus. My money's on Mystery Bus being the one feeding Esmeralda here insider information. But once you get past Madame Esmeralda, then you get to go up against the fifth gym leader and that's Rocker Vince, the electric type specialist. He's a rhythmic battler who battles with a sense of tempo, always building up for that final blow and challengers best be cautious of his rock concerts because even though the show is free the win is not so buckle up his team consists of an electrode a raichu electabuzz and his ace ampharos who he rocks out with the most next up is the sixth gym leader known as sage bramble the grass type specialist bramble meditates daily and has a deep connection to the forest and uses that connection to bestow wisdom and understanding to new challengers his battling style is fluid and adaptive reflecting the ever-changing nature of Mother Earth, and his strategies focus on healing and resilience. His team consists of Victory Bell, Sunflora, Jumpluff, and his ace, Blossom. Now, the seventh gym leader is up next, and that's Skier Freya, the Ice-type specialist, and she's got a strong personality. Utilizing the harsh and unforgiving nature of Ice in her battle strategies, she crushes opponents, leaving them unable to react. Her gym is akin to a snowy mountain pass, testing challengers and their endurance in battle. She does this with her ice cold team of Dugong, Delibird, Pillowswine, and her ace, Sneasel. Good luck overcoming this cold front. Which brings us to the final gym leader of this alternate Johto League, and that's Engineer Ferris, or as he's commonly known amongst the region as Dr. Ferris Gearwright. You see, Dr. Ferris here specializes in precision and strength, which is why his type of choice is the Steel type, which is another great pick for the region that introduced this typing in the first place. His innovative Innovative thinking inspires many trainers and scholars alike and helps trainers take that final challenge before becoming ready for the Elite Four. His team consists of a Steelix, Fortress, Magneton, Scizor, and his A Skarmory. But you can't be stopped by any means, and that means you've collected all eight badges and the Elite Four is up next. But before we get into that, might I ask you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content? You see, this is a brand new series here on the channel and the first video got a ton of praise. So if you guys want more of this, then you gotta let me know by liking, commenting, and sharing, and all that good stuff. But enough of that. Let's check out the first Elite Four member, and that's got to be our man, Fire Breather Blaze. And hey, would you look at that? He's a Fire-type specialist. Who would have thought? Blaze here turns every battle into a spectacular show, and he does this with his Pokemon team of Ninetales, Arcanine, Magmar, Rapidash, and his ace, Magargo. Which, yeah, I know, Magargo here isn't that strong, but 
we're following a theme giving every Johto gym leader a Johto native Pokemon. And well, it was either this Pokemon or the fire type starter. And we all know how much you guys love it when I do that. Moving on to the second Elite Four member, and that's Hiker Brick, the rock type specialist. Brick here is like a mountain reflecting unwavering strength and impenetrable defenses. However, also symbolizing avalanches where his offensive strategies, once they get rolling, can really roll out. His team consists of an Amistar, Kabutops, Golem, Pseudo Udo, and his ace, the pseudo legendary themselves, Tyranitar. But I have a feeling some of you are already typing out how much you love that idea in the comments. Next up is Kimono Girl Aiko, the psychic type specialist, and this one was super fun to create. She's graceful and intuitive and synchronizes well with her psychic type Pokemon, but it kind of gives her an edge in battle. Her team consists of a Wobbuffet, Girafferig, Slowking, Zatu, oh hey that's me, and her ace Espeon, one of the new evolutions of this region. Which brings us to the final Elite Four member and that's got to be Black Belt Kenji, the fighting type specialist who makes Bruno look pretty bad by comparison. And his team consists of a Hitmontop, Primeape, Machamp, Oliwrath, and his ace Heracross. So good luck getting past this warrior lineup. But not to worry because of course you do, you're the champ in the making which means the champion is up next and for this series I'm thinking of focusing on champions that fully embody that new region and while the only trainer class that made sense for that is none other than the swimmer class. Introducing Swimmer Marina, the water type specialist and the first ever champion with a full team of Johto native monotype Pokemon. You see her team consists of a Politoed, Quagsire, Azumaru, Wolfish, Lantern, and her ace Kingdra. Six Gen 2 Pokemon, which I think is pretty neat. But there you have it. That's what I think Johto would look like if all the original gym leaders got replaced. Next up is Hoenn, and man oh man do I have some nice ideas for that region. As always, if you enjoyed, don't forget to tap that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Might as well check out my other videos while you're at it. I'm sure you'll find a series worth binge watching. Thanks for watching. Check out this video next and see you soon. Bye.